and welcome to The Solve Network. I'm Shane Borza, host of the podcast. Along with my co-founder, Benjamin Goss, we'd like to welcome you. Our mission is to provide solutions and create a network of experts for you to learn from. We hope this episode and expert helps you to learn, grow, and move forward. And now, on with the show. Scene one, Apple, take one. Hi, I'm Shane Borza, your content creator coach. I have two books on filmmaking, Film Notes, where you learn to write, direct, and produce, and the Film Notes Workbook, where you can learn checklists and paperwork to streamline creating your content. Available at shaneborza.com. I also have filmmaker resources like the Paperwork Bundle with over 300 documents, the Sound Effects Bundle with almost 3,000 files, and the Music Bundle featuring 900 tracks of all genres. Want to build your professional credits? Become an associate producer and get listed on IMDb. Let me help you get your art out into the world. Scene one, Apple, take one. So I'm going to open it up to everyone else in the call. If anything, I know like Latasha came a little late, but if you you have any thoughts or challenges or anything, uh, maybe uh, a personal room or workspace that you are picturing for yourself that you might want to run some ideas past. Mariana obviously knows so much about this. So I would love to hear what anybody has. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> so, hi, sorry, I was late. I have two questions. Um, one of them is how do you know feng shui? Like I hear that, but I don't really know what that means. And then the other question is with the kids being at home for school, and me working at home, what's the best way for me to like separate and organize us so that we're all independent, but we're not getting in each other's way? I love those questions. Thank you for asking them. Mm -hmm. So first we're gonna start with Feng Shui. I'm gonna keep it very short and sweet for you. It's just a placement of items, like the way things are placed in a room, sometimes it blocks energy. And it doesn't, it, it doesn't flow as naturally. So for instance, I'll give you an example. When you walk in a bedroom, having the bed being at the complete end of the bedroom facing you is really just, it's opening. It's just, it creates like a flow of energy that maybe you wouldn't experience if the bed was facing the opposite way and you have the wall of the bed facing you, if you get what I mean. So that's just the, the logistics behind it. But um, if I were to give you my perception of what feng shui is and how to pick up on it or how to feel it, it's just let's pretend you have a living room and you haven't moved it maybe in a year. Everything stayed the same. It accumulated dust. Even if you wipe the dust, it just stays. Nothing moved. Then there's the stagnant energy that is there. It's just, there's a lot of emotions that happen in that space. A lot of things that happen. Maybe you argued with your husband or, or your kids and that's just stagnant energy. The second you move things around, you're creating a flow that's going to move energy around and automatically it'll create a new um, shift in that space. And that is what Feng Shui is. And that's why I love it so much. I do it myself. Sometimes I do it temporarily and it still works. So let's just say, I get, I, I feel like the energy has been stagnant for a month. I will get up and move things around just for the sake of moving things around. And then a day or two will pass and I'll bring them back. But all, all of a sudden the energy feels different in the room. So if you want to just play around with it, I promise you, you won't regret it. It will feel different and it will feel great. And for your second question, there's a lot of ways to go about it, but you know, I don't know how old are your kids? My oldest is 18 and my youngest is 12. Can you tell me a bit more? Because if I were to give you advice, I do want to understand more your circumstances. So what is it exactly that is bothering you and the dynamic you guys are having? Like, what are they doing? Yeah. Are, they loud? are they fighting? Are they arguing? What is it? So we have four dogs. <laughs> two of I them are up there. I can't handle already. So my gosh. Yeah. Two are upstairs. Two are downstairs. Um, they have their little spaces where they go. <laughs> and my office is here in the loft. 
but the loft is open. Mm. So sometimes I literally move my office into my bedroom and close the door. <laughs> but I don't like doing that. So I'm thinking of maybe getting like some little curtain or partition mm -hmm. for my loft. I don't know. The kids are usually in their rooms working, but every once in a while they'll come out and work like at the kitchen table. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I just want to go buy a whole bunch of desks and chairs and um, uh, what are those bookcases? Like I just want to get everybody in their own little spot because I'm a classroom teacher but I'm teaching from home so it's like I have all this work to do and there's all this noise and I'm just like ah! <laughs> um question are they making noise because they're watching tv or playing video games oh, no. they're talking they're just talking they're girls so they're talking <laughs> okay. they're just having a good time I feel you so here's my number one advice that I would give. I usually use frequency music, binaural beats. I put them on. You can get yourself some good headsets, something that's going to block the noise out because you don't want to make them stop live either. Yeah. You don't want to block yourself out entirely because I'm sure you enjoy having the open space or else you would have yeah. stayed in the bedroom. So I feel like creating a virtual bubble to be in and to feel shielded and to feel like you can stay focused at your task. The easiest way to go about it is to put some music, not any kind of music, binaural beats. Basically it's, um, if I were to explain it, I'm gonna try my best to do it. I'm not very good at like uh, scientific, scientific stuff, but there's two types of frequency that are playing in each ear and the middle frequency is what your brain will pick up on. And so what that's going to create is it's going to create like a space for your brain to stay focused on that and what you're doing instead of focusing on your uh, surrounding. And so that would be one of the simplest way, I guess, to go about it, considering your circumstances are a bit uh, particular. You, you can't just be like, yeah. don't come here because I'm working until 6 p.m. And then you can yeah. You can't do that. So I think that creating yourself a bubble would be the fastest way to get there. You're you're brilliant. I just bought headsets yesterday. It's right. amazing. I just I I don't know why. I just said I think I need okay. these. And they're the big kind that you just it was great. These are perfect. This is exactly what I envisioned in my head when I was giving you that tip. And I think that the universe, because you surrendered to it and you bought it without knowing why. Now yeah. you know why. You were missing the key information, which is what I just told you. Thank you. How do you spell the, the kind yeah, of music? Let me write it in the chat for you. Okay, perfect. Uh, I'm going to look it up on YouTube. Beats for focus and productivity. Huh. Thank you. My pleasure. I'm really happy you got them. What are the odds? <laughs> so I hope I answered your question well. Okay. So I say there's another, and, and yet I can I can speak to binaural beats. Uh, they work very well. I actually have a, a playlist, and uh, so Latasha, you'll see there. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So experiment and see. It's just like music, kind of. You know, you'll find one that speaks to you and that kind of hits you in the right way. And you and it was the the good bad thing is sometimes you will lose yourself and you're like, oh, three hours went by because yeah. you're just you're in just it. Focus. You're zoning in like you will. Yeah. So there was another question in the chat. So do you agree that people are limited in the number of quality decisions they can make in a day? For example, there's a, a lot of famous people and CEOs, you know, they'll, they'll have like the same outfit every day and it just removes, they, it's one less decision or um, they eat the same breakfast every morning. It's just one less thing they have to think about. Is that something you think is, is real or, or not? And how would that apply to keeping things organized? That's a great question. And I absolutely agree. I live by it. There's a reason why you guys saw my fridge a few minutes ago and I have prep meals. It's because what I do is I decide once, once in the week, what am I going to eat for a whole week? And then boop, 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 boop. Great. I'm going to do that. I'm going to spend two hours and then I'm done. I just take it out. And that's, I don't have to think about what I'm going to eat the whole day. I already know the whole week, actually, now that I think about it. So that's a huge amount of decisions that's being taken away from my shoulders. And I can use that uh, decision fatigue, I guess, to um, 
I can avoid, I mean, that decision fatigue so I can focus on actually making wise decisions for my business and what really matters. Another way this can apply is, again, the example I gave you guys earlier with the closet. My closet, I filter it every week, every two weeks, and I only keep things that fit me, things that I know I wear, things that I know I will wear eventually, um, and everything else, I have this luggage, I put it in, and if by the end of the month, it's still there, and I didn't change my mind, I give it away to people. That's a really fast way to eliminate decision fatigue uh, without limiting yourself to wearing the same shirt every day, because then you're, you're limiting um, your options by a lot. You're reducing, instead of having 40 shirts, then you're left with maybe 10. And then you usually have your favorites, maybe from these, you'll, you'll pick some and you'll know they look great with this pair of pants. And it's just, you can get dressed really, really easily that way. A little tip that I can give you guys, um, if you want to get into the gist of it, get into the habit of it, put all of your hangers on one side. And every time you pick a shirt or you pick up something, put it back, but twist it the other side. At the end of the month, or after two months, if you don't want to make it too short, notice how many of these are still unturned. These will, this will give you a clear visual of what you aren't really using. And then if you take them off, you can put them like I do in luggage for a month. And then if you completely forgot about them, then that just basically means you won't really wear them or use them. I think that's a, that's a great technique. I've never heard of the, the hangers thing. Um, actually, I can't remember her name, but uh, there's a stylist that I heard on a podcast and she suggested where you just, and I actually did this with my wife. It was, it was really great. I recommend everyone do this is uh, you just take a, an evening and you each put everything you have on so that the other person can see you. And then when you wear it, when you wear it, you talk about like, how does it feel? Like, does it actually like physically feel good on you? And also, does it make you feel good? Like, do you like it? And it was really fascinating because there are certain things that you see the other person wear them and you, and you say, oh, I love you in that. Why don't you wear it more? And you go, oh, I didn't know you like this, you know, <laughs> or, or the opposite. You're like, um, I don't like this, but you like it. And you're like, I don't like it. <laughs> you're like, oh, I thought you did. And uh, it's a really great way to check in with your partner, but it's also a great way to, uh, like, for instance, I never realized that because I am an outdoorsy person. So I got a lot of like um, blends and, and things like polyester blend, cotton blends, you know, thing. And uh, I was like, I don't really like the way they feel. Mm. They're, they're functional, but they're, they're not very nice. They don't feel good. And I didn't know that until I did that exercise. So the reason I brought that up is I'm curious if you have exercises like that that you do with people, especially for their workspaces, such as you talked about moving things around to, to increase the energy. So if someone, if you walk into a place and it's set up a certain way, maybe it's not so much cluttered, but it just isn't set up in a way that gives good flow or good creativity in the space. Is that something that you do? You have them actually rearrange the office or do you kind of just leave all the big things where they are just kind of deal with, you know, the paperwork and the organization? I do if they give me the space to do it. And again, the only reason why I'm capable of doing it is because as much as I'm very organized, I also have a diploma and, and interior decoration. So I can give you not only the blend of the feng shui, but the visually pleasing aspect of having your space look more aesthetic, I would say. Uh, so I guess I do, but again, I wait for the permission or I wait to have the, the okay from my clients. So that brings to mind, I wanted to ask you earlier and I forgot, what background or training, you just mentioned your degree, what have you gone through and how, what have you studied and what have you brought together to place you kind of uniquely in the space so that you can offer this to people and kind of read them. Like I was really impressed with how you're able to kind of like see Latasha's space and give her something that was so spot on. So there's kind of obviously this intangible ability to connect with people, but, but what background and kind of training do you bring? 
I love that question. Um, I often get that actually to keep it very basic. I'm still surprised how it all came about, but I actually started in business. And so I have a background in business and that had that I didn't know I would end up having my own business. I always felt like I would, but that definitely helped because now that I'm doing, you know, offices and everything, having a clear understanding of like how a business works um, is a great background to have when it comes to organizing, you know, people's files uh, in terms of priority, especially CEOs and entrepreneurs. Uh, I also have a background in finance uh, when it comes to investments, mutual funds, etc. This also helps when it comes to taxes, when it comes to organizing these whole financial aspects of an office area or an office space or a home. Um, after that, what did I do? I did an uh, interior decoration certificate as well. So I got the whole visual and I learned a lot about uh, how to design a space to make it look very aesthetically pleasing to the eye and just harmonious overall. So I have a background in that. And the last one I did was actually to get a degree in organization. This is where I learned all the techniques. This is where I understood calamity and um, how to understand the worth of an object and how to make the decision behind, you know, is it worth it or is it not valuable? And what do we do with that? So this is all my background, but most of my experience in organizing really came from personal experience. Actually, it just, I used to be a very, chaotic teenager believe it or not my room was the messiest thing anyone could ever see my I used to find myself in clutter I never thought I would be an organizer basically that's what I'm trying to say and at one point I remember I was in college and I had so I wasn't in college that's not true I was not in college I was actually younger I was 14 or 15 and I had and so much anxiety. I don't know if it was because of my finals or I was just going through a breakup or I don't know what the hell was going on. I wasn't feeling good. And the first reflex I had was I want to feel in control. So I just got up and I started organizing everything. I reorganized my drawers. I reorganized my closet. I reorganized every single paper I had that I had kept for years. And I purged and I purged and I purged. And after hours of work, I remember I started in the morning and it was nighttime. I sat down on my bed and I looked around and I was like, whoa, that's what being organized feels like. That feels great. The next morning I got up, went and I knew exactly where my clothes were, where my socks were, where everything was. And since I never looked back and I apply that every day in my life. That, that's a great story. And I, I think we, I think we all can, we all have experienced something similar at some point in our lives. Uh, I wanted to ask if, if you've ever found, because uh, I've, I've known people like, uh, you know, they're uh, a certain way, like at work, and then they're different at home, or you know, vice versa. So, have you ever found people that maybe they're really organized at the office, and their home is chaos, or vice versa? How do you deal with them? having kind of inconsistencies in different spaces as far as organization and decluttering, cleanliness, that type of thing? It's a really good question, but most often than not, when I see people do that, it's because they're prioritizing something over the other and they're seeing value in being organized at work and not at home. Now, my job is to show them the value in, hey, you can also have a really functional home. Did you know that you can make your kitchen so functional that you save time when you cook a meal, that when, you, when your kids help you in the house, they can put things back exactly where they are and that it's gonna give them a sense of control and clarity because there's a system in place and everyone's agreeing on it. So it's just a matter of, of really getting, to, getting them to understand that there is a value in the opposite uh, place where it's, where they're not really valuing organization as much. Your brain will always do something when they see the benefit behind it, right? And again, you mentioned this a few times. I think it's really important for people to have that takeaway of, like, like I mentioned, it's like the dividend. You know, if you take some time now, you organize everything, then later you're not 
because not only is it, like you mentioned, it's taking the time and the energy and the money, you know, if you lose something. And I remember my uh, dad one time, he found, I figure it was like a wrench or something. He it, It'd fallen somewhere and he had to go buy a new one. And then, you know, months later he finds the old one. Well, now what do I do? I have two. Why do I have two? I don't need them. If, if you get things organized, it, it does, it saves you all of that stuff. And, I, and I, I'm really happy to hear you talk about the value. So I'm curious if, if you have like um, set priorities or values, like uh, lists that you like to present to people and say, you know, keep these things in mind, or does it, does it differ to each person? It differs to each person. And I'm never going to be the person to tell them what is more important than the other. It's really just me guiding them through them seeing what is valuable and what isn't. And we all have a different priority set. Like, for instance, let's just say we are organizing um, a kitchen again. Let's just go with that example. We're prioritizing a kitchen and the person who's organizing their space really isn't much of a cooker they really love you know drinking smoothies they're usually on the go why would i encourage them to have their pots and their pans and their their stuff close to them when i can prioritize maybe having their shake bottles close and their mixer maybe accessible and you know have them have all sorts of protein shakes and protein powder in the cabinets nearest to them. Each person really is different and they're all gonna have a different set of priorities and a, a different set of system in place to make their space functional. And I think that it all boils down to me sitting with the client and really understanding what their lifestyle is like and what is important to them and how can we make their space work for them not the other way around. So I'm going to go with that a little further. Yeah. What is your onboarding process when you get a new client? How do you spend that time with them? How do you get to know those things? I ask as many questions as I can. I literally ask them everything. Like, what do you do in a day? What is working for you in that space? What isn't working for you in that space? Did you ever try to organize it yourself? Hmm, you did. Okay, what didn't work in that system? How long did it last? And I ask and I ask and I ask until I get so clear about what the pain point is and how I can resolve the issue that I have a clear system tailored to them. And I think that is my process. I just want to make sure I open it back up and see if anybody else has any other thoughts or questions that you might be able to help them with. And if not, I have other things, but I don't want to hog the mic, so to speak. I think Latasha has a question. Hi. <laughs> I, I just want to say it's so beautiful how all of your experiences and your educational degrees have just come together and created this wonderful business for you. I think that's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you so much for saying that, Latasha. I appreciate it. And I think I have the same perception on how amazing um your universe is because like you ended up buying headphones yesterday not knowing why and here we are here we are today you have your answer so for me I just find it as just the <laughs> beauty of the, the universe I find it so fascinating you know it's awesome I just think about finance and interior design and organization it would seem like those things don't go together but then when you talk about your experience, it's like, oh, it makes perfect sense. And you know what, Latasha, I grew up really feeling confused about it. Like I was like, <laughs> well, I did finance and I have a background in business, but like I'm right now doing interior decoration. I didn't, nothing tied, nothing was like, it didn't make sense. And the second I went on, remember I mentioned in the beginning, you weren't there actually, but I was saying that I was on a self-discovery journey and I was living in Hawaii for a few months. And that really sort of like, then I hired Coach Amanda, then I kind of like transitioned into that. Uh, it's only then that I was like, oh, 
Okay, okay, okay. Well, you know, it all boils down to one thing. We can actually blend it all and make it one thing. And I think that's what Deep Down I really wanted because I felt scattered to have all these different backgrounds and not know really where it was going. <laughs> Who's like your perfect client? Do you work for like uh, corporations or small business owners? Like who are your, who's your group? I have two ideal clients. Obviously, I'm always open for everyone. Like my goal is really to help people and make them experience what it's like to be in an organized space. But the ideal client for me at the moment, uh, based off of the transition my business took, I would say definitely big corporations because um, if I'm working with big corporations and I can help a ton of employees to just feel better at work, because if you think about it, if you can feel great at home and be in an organized space, imagine how much more efficient you'll be if your office space is organized and if you have a clear understanding of, you know, your emails and your your cabinets and everything. You just never look for anything. You know where everything is. Yeah, people need that right now. Oh, my gosh, so much, especially, mm -hmm. especially right now because of COVID. Because what happened was in the past... People who weren't organized and who were very cluttered would get away with this because they would go to the office and sometimes it's a communal space, so didn't really <laughs> have a desk, so they always had a clear desk to work from yeah. every single time. And now these people have been accumulating clutter for a whole year, almost two years. And so it, it's, it makes a huge difference. And these CEOs of entrepreneurs, these CEOs, um, these big corporations, they they don't know what conditions their workers are, are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. They don't know what distractions they have and how it affects their performance at the end of the year. They're not aware of that, but they're starting to see it. And this is where what I do really comes in handy. That's cool. I can see you going into an office and, and like completely changing everything around and saying, okay, she has to sit over there now. And this is going to go this way. I could just see how that'd be so cool. They walk in the next day and they're like, oh my God, what happened? <laughs> That's yeah. cool. Yeah, definitely. Or just seeing the transformation of just walking um, in a corporate setting and then having all these offices have like a bunch of sticky notes and like boards filled with stuff and just have it all kind of like gone. You know, it's art, it's inspiration, it's quotes, and everything, you know, scribbly, scribbly, it's all digital. And it just yeah. feels, you know. Plants, flowers. Yeah, these are all little things. And I. it's actually one thing I'm glad we're talking about it because there's other ways to be more efficient. And it sounds stupid like that when we say it, but, you know, an organized, tidy space isn't enough. You have to add a touch, something that's going to make you inspired. So like if you have this like beautiful salt lamp on the side, maybe a few crystals or whatever inspires you or, or brings joy to you, add it. If you have a favorite pencil, bring, you know, buy that pencil and use it every day. Um, a photo of you and your, your kids and your husband and Anything that sparks joy and inspires you is an addition to that space and it's going to make it more harmonious. And I value that a lot as well. Harmony. Yes. <laughs> That's actually where it originated from. The word harmony, believe it or not, began, the reason why I called my business harmony is because of the feeling that I want people to experience when they enter a space that was touched by me. <laughs> If I give my little spark to it, I want them to feel in harmony. That's why I called my brand Harmony. <laughs> Wanted to ask, you were talking there a little bit about the reaction people have. And uh, I'm just picturing like the reveal at the end of like a Queer Eye episode or any one of the home makeover shows where people, you know, they have the space, they leave and they come back and go, oh my God. So uh, I guess a two part question is, do you watch a lot of those type of home and space or, or even people makeover shows? And do you get any, um, you know, ideas or, or anything from, from things like that? Uh, and do you often have those types of reactions from your clients? 
I do. And I love them. And there's a reason why I do what I do because not even just the clients, their boyfriends, their girlfriends, their partner, their family members, they, they walk into their space. They're like, whoa, that is a whole different place. What the hell is going on? And they're so proud of them. And then they get excited and they get excited for them. And it's just a whole vibe of positivity because, you know, believe it or not, when you're not organized, you're not the only one experiencing that, you know, <laughs> your, your husband, your kids, everyone else is feeling it um, along with you. So when they make the decision to really get clear on that and tidy their space, everyone's happy along with them. And it's usually very joyful and beautiful to look at, especially when they're walking in and they're like, that's a whole different place. I don't even recognize my office anymore. Uh, I love that. I love, love, love it. And yes, I do get inspiration from a lot of shows. I myself want to have one eventually down the line. It is a project of mine and, and my business uh, to have a Netflix show. I get inspiration from Marie Kondo a lot. Uh, and my favorite thing is get organized. If you guys haven't watched that Netflix show, go check it out. Um, it's, they're amazing. They, they use the color of the rainbow to organize their things. And so it's really well uh, an aesthetic, really well done and aesthetic, and it's just so inspirational to to look at for me. I uh, I haven't uh, heard of, of the Get Organized show, but I was just thinking like, oh, you should have a show; it'd be so perfect. <laughs> so I'll have to check that out. Uh, so I wanted to see if you have any resources or things. I, I you you mentioned uh, the. Uh, I forgot the name of it, the um, um, Pomodoro technique and a couple other things. So if you if you were to give someone, say, your top two or three takeaways, like, uh, oh, go check this out or go watch the show so that people can have some either examples or some inspiration, what would you say those would be? The first thing I would say, because you guys already know I value purging a lot as a part of organizing and tidying. There's a show on Netflix called, I believe it's called Less Is More, or um, I think it's called The Minimalist. I'm not too sure, but if you write The Minimalist, you will fall on it. It's two men who will really talk about, you know, the advantages of being minimalistic. And in that show, there's going to be so many tips on how to purge. And um, that's definitely a great resource. I make all my clients watch it. And when they watch it, even the most resistant client I have, they watch it and they go, oh my God, take it out. I don't need it anymore. They just, it just, it's so well done and explained and the psychology behind, you know, the importance to not have clutter that when they watch that, they usually, they understand the concept behind it. So that is definitely one resource I recommend. Pomodoro technique, I swear by it day and night to anyone who's trying to be more organized. And recently, I'll give you another tip as well. It might be a bit challenging, but you'll understand a bit more where I'm coming from. When you do your to-do list, I'll give you guys an example. What you do is not draft just what you have to do in your day. Because if you do that, then you'll end up doing things that aren't really important. And you're kind of like taking care of the filler tasks that aren't really as complex, but they're not getting, they're not moving the needle forward. So I can give you a quick tip that I learned along the way that I apply myself every single day now to feel less overwhelmed. Here's how to draft a really successful to-do list. So the first thing you do, I don't know if we have time before I get into it, do we have time? Okay, good, <laughs> just in case. The first thing you'll do is you're going to write down everything you that's coming to your mind. Like, oh, I need to take care of that. And then I need to do this. And then I need to do that. Draft it all and leave an open check mark next to it. Okay. Once that's done, I want you to pick three highlighters and go according to these colors. I usually go, that's why I have the highlighters. I go with green, red and yellow. And as you guys can tell, there's a reason behind that system, right? When we're thinking of green, we think of something that might not be as urgent. Something that's more pink is like, oh, got to take care of that now. And a yellow is more like moderate. And these three colors represent your importance in terms of tasks. Remember when we set values to each item, we also need to set value to each task. 
And there's a way to implement the Pomodoro technique in there as well, and I do. So once you have these three colors, I want you to just fill up the little check mark with the color you associate to each task. Once that's done, you'd redraft next to it if you can, or if you don't, you don't have to, but I usually do that just to get a, a clearer visual. Um, you go green first, yellow second, and red at the bottom. And you, from the green, select the three first that you feel are the most important. By the end of the day, if you get these done, you will be proud of you and you will feel like you moved the needle forward. And then whatever comes next, it's extra. There's an average that, uh, there's an average, there's a statistic that says that on average, people are capable of taking care of maybe three to five tasks. Anything else is literally just overwhelming you because <laughs> you probably won't be able to take care of it. Another good tip would be when you write your task, try to write them in action steps that are easy. Like instead of saying, um, take care of X thing, oh no, I'll give you a more specific example because that's too general. Um, let's say instead of saying, um, shoot, post X, Y, and Z video. Well, if you haven't done the shooting, if you haven't done the, the you know, if you haven't prepared the character and the idea and the visual, split that into multiple steps and then insert that into your day task instead of having something general that feels overwhelming and you don't know where to begin. So be very specific and action oriented, something that you know if you read, you'll know what to do. Uh, and now the, the Pomodoro technique can be applied in there as well because once you have your first three greens, then you can just say, I estimate that the first task will take maybe three Pomodoros. And then you can set your alarm, be like, let me get started. 25 minutes, start, great. You can put your binaural beats, Latasha, beats and just focus for 25 minutes until the alarm rings. And then you're good to go, you're on a roll before you know it, you've tackled down your first three tasks and you're proud of yourself. <laughs> so that's just one tip, if you want more, you guys are in luck because it just so happens that recently my business, my business partner and I um, are going to be hosting a webinar on May 6th and we will be basically giving away seven productivity tips. It's going to be 45 minutes. Uh, so come ready, bring in a notepad and we're going to be sharing a lot of things that are going to help you to save at least one hour every day. That totals up to 6.25 weeks a year in lost productivity. So you guys want to be there. I promise you won't regret it. I'll have the link if you can have um, an email with, you know, email people who could be interested. I'll send that to you guys. I want as many people there because we are going to be providing a lot of value. I'm so glad that you talked about that because uh, we're going to be wrapping up here in a moment. But I first want to ask if anyone else has any other questions. If so, uh, feel free to jump in in a moment. But uh, yeah, I want to make sure you have an opportunity to, to, to spotlight anything. So please uh, send me the information. And next week when we send out the recording, I'll put everything in there so people can, can get that. And if anyone's listening to this, uh, we'll have all the contact information for Mariana as well. So uh, other than that, if someone wanted to get in touch with you or someone wanted to find more information about you, you know, follow you on social media, where would you want to direct people so that they could reach out, make an appointment, see what you're doing, read up on you, whatever it might be. The first place is always my website. I spent so much time designing it, so I want everybody there. Uh, but also because on the website, there's a link to my social media. There's a link to booking a free consultation with me. There's a link to, you know, all kinds of, of uh, uh, places that you can reach out, I guess. So the website is www, like www.harmonyofficial.net. And over there, you guys will get a clearer understanding of who I am, what I do as well. And if you guys want some organizing tips, you guys can follow me on Instagram. It's harmonyofficial101. Um, and I'll guys, I'll follow you, I'll follow you back and, uh, and you guys will get a lot of value as well in there because I share tips and, and tricks on how to be organized. Mariana, I want to thank you again so much for being here. I learned a lot and I, uh, I did have one final question I wanted to ask you. So put you on the spot here. What is the most challenging area of your space for you to keep decluttered and organized? Hmm. 
I would say my, that is a good question. I would say this one over there, it's um, a closet where I keep like my, when, when we're walking, we have our jackets and we have our boots and we have our, our stuff in there. I feel like I don't declutter it as often, but I do see a lot of value because the second I do, which I do roughly around every month once, um i just ugh, the second it opens i'm like oh <laughs> it feels so great but that is the only place i can truly say in all honesty i find a bit more challenging not because it's complex because it's not it's just i tend to kind of like leave it on the side and focus on the other areas yeah perfect so thank you so much for being here mariana i hope people can reach out to you and find some decluttering in their life by uh, tapping your resources because uh, I, I learned a lot, but I also saw that you were able to both connect with the person as well as kind of solve the problem in the, in the space. I think that's very valuable. So thank you again and good night everyone. Hey, my name is James. I'm a lawyer who's always been interested in optimal human performance and that's how I found Shane. If you're looking to upgrade your mental and physical fitness, then the ultimate performance course is for you. It's the key to performing better at work, at home, and in all of life's challenges. I've also found it to be a great community of like-minded and supportive professionals. As Shane says, together, everyone accomplishes more. Want to have your ultimate performance or find out more about how to optimize your mind and body fitness? Contact me at shaneborza.com and see if the DIY or the group program would be best for you. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Solve Network. These interviews are from our web series of the same name. Want to watch? Head over to YouTube and search for The Solve Network. If you have questions, you can reach out to me at shaneborza.com. On behalf of my co-founder, Benjamin Goss, we're glad you are a part of the network and hope you are finding solutions. If you need solutions, please reach out.